Hi, I'm Greg with Occam's Razors. Here at the University of Arkansas, we formed the group Occam's Razors. It's a free-thinking, secular group made for students who attend the University of Arkansas. Our mascot here at the University of Arkansas happens to be a Razorback. So, it seemed only fitting that the name for our secular group would be Occam's Razors. However, there have been occasions when I've been asked, what's Occam's Razors? What's Occam's Razor? Who's this Occam guy? So, I thought that it would be fitting to have a one video dedicated to the concept of Occam's Razor. Now, William of Occam was a English Franciscan philosopher who lived in the 13th and 14th century, and he wrote on philosophy, theology, politics. His most famous concept, and what he's most known for today, is his theory of Occam's Razor. Simply put, the concept states, entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily. Okay, well that's all fine and well, but what does that actually mean? Well, here's an example. Let's say you wake up in the morning, you rub the sleet out of your eyes, you go downstairs to find that your apartment is immaculate. Now, when you went to sleep, it was clean, but it was not this level of clean. Now you look around for a minute or two, and in your discombobulated state, you kind of rub your eyes again and think, all right, well, how did this happen? Immediately, a couple options come to light. You think to yourself, well, option one, my roommate, who never sleeps at night, who's a neat freak, got up and cleaned last night. Second option, your mom came in and cleaned the apartment while you were sleeping. Third option is that aliens came down from the planet Plufon and snuck into your house in the middle of the night, cleaned up everything while they were gathering specimens because they're just the nice kind of aliens that you would like to have around cleaning your apartment. I know the last one sounds a little far-fetched, but for the point of this experiment, just roll with it for a little while. Now, your roommate is not here at this time. He's already in classes, but you know he stays up late at night. You know that he's a clean freak, and he sits up sometimes in the middle of the night watching old movies, and you've come downstairs before and found your apartment clean, so that's a very real possibility. Now, it is also a possibility that your mom came in last night and cleaned your apartment for you. However, it's less likely than the roommate because she broke her hip, she's bedridden, she's afraid to drive, but that doesn't really matter because she doesn't even own a car. So that is a possibility, but it's not as likely as the roommate. It is also possible the aliens came down and cleaned your apartment last night. They traveled billions of miles, and of course the biggest priority is to get human samples and to not get caught. But while they're in your apartment collecting bacteria samples, they looked around and they said, wow, this place is could use some spiffing up. So before they left, they spick and spanned everything, they cleaned the toilets, they did the dishes, and they skedaddled before they had the opportunity to get caught. This is not very likely, but it is a possibility. Right off the bat, you've used Occam's razor and you didn't even know it. Simply put, Occam's razor says that when you have a couple different solutions to the same problem, the simple solution is usually going to be the correct one. Now, of these three possibilities, the alien answer is most likely going to be the one that's least likely. Um, got aliens traveling billions of miles, coming to your apartment to take samples, and I've never heard of an alien who knew what soft scrub was. So while it is possible that an alien came down or aliens came down to clean your apartment, it is definitely going to be the least likely of the three. And it is also possible that your mom came in and cleaned last night, but we've already covered the fact that she's bedridden with a broken hip, she doesn't own a car, she doesn't like to drive, and she lives 100 miles away. She could have come in and cleaned last night, and that's more likely than the alien possibility, but still, it's not very likely. However, the idea that your roommate cleaned is not very far-fetched at all. He's done it before. You know that your roommate sits up in the middle of the night watching old movies like Top Gun. And the idea that he cleaned up, did the dishes, straightened up everything is not very far-fetched at all. Now this would also eliminate all those other miscellaneous problems that you came up with with the other two solutions. Space travel, your mom's broken hip. There's no real reason to suspect that your roommate did not clean up last night. Now, thinking to yourself that your roommate probably did clean up and you don't have to worry about aliens invading your house, then you go into the kitchen, you fix yourself a bowl of fruity pebbles, and you go sit and watch cartoons. Occam's Razor simply takes out all the solutions with the greatest number of unknowns to focus on the simplest solutions first. 
Now, this concept is used in secular and free thinking circles, but it's also used in science in areas such as math, science, biology, medicine, to simply find the correct answer the quickest. This concept is also used by religious individuals. When they see the complex workings of science, it's simply easier for them to say, God did it, and accept that as the simplest solution. To that, I say that if you think God is a simpler answer than science, then you have a serious misconception of the complexities of God. I tell people, you have any concept how big the universe is? We sit on an Earth, which goes around a sun in our little solar system. This solar system makes up just one small part on the middle of the arm of a miscellaneous galaxy that we call the Milky Way. That galaxy is in a cluster of local galaxies that we call the local group. And there are billions of groups of galaxies that span the entire universe. I mean, it's big! That's really important because one of the criteria for God is omnipresence. That just simply means being present at all points of the universe at all points of time. So here, you sitting, watching this video right now, God is present watching you. On a miscellaneous asteroid that's hundreds of millions of light years away, this small little asteroid just chinked into another asteroid, and God was also there and saw that, just like he's there in every point of the universe at all points of time. Not just at the beginning, but in the future also. Omnipresence is a mind-boggling huge concept that I don't think many people understand. And if you think that the presence of God is a simpler answer than anything science could ever propose, then I say again, you have a serious misconception of the complexities of God. And that's just omnipresence. I'm not talking about omnipotence, omniscience, omnibenevolence, divine simplicity, or necessary existence proposed by ontological arguments. By the very definition of the word God, you're putting in the most complex concept that exists in the human mind. That is not how Occam's Razor works. Now there are a lot of arguments which you can gain a lot of headway on by using the complexities of God, but not on this particular front, not by using Occam's Razor as your answer. I hope this video has been informative for you. Really, I just wanted to go over the concept of Occam's Razors and use it in practical purposes so that you could better understand it instead of me just simply stating what the, the concept actually is. If you have any other questions, feel free to email us, go get a library card, go online and look up information for yourself. Until then, I'm Greg with Occam's Razors.